You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. This is Derek's O'Reilly Auto Parts story. After the third time jump starting my car, I finally realized my battery was dying. So I stopped by O'Reilly to have it checked. They tested it right there in the parking lot. It was bad, real bad. But they helped me find the right battery for my car and even installed it for free. Now my car starts like new. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. Hi, I'm Jay Farner, CEO of Quicken Loans, America's largest mortgage lender. Spring will be here soon, so if buying a new home is on your to-do list, right now is the time to call Quicken Loans. Learn about which mortgage options make sense for you and get a jump on your competition. With our exclusive Rate Shield approval, the low rate you lock today is protected for up to 90 days while you shop for your new home. With a Rate Shield approval, if rates go up, your low rate stays locked. But if rates go down, you get that new, even lower rate. Either way, you win. Talk to us today at 800-QUICKEN or go to rocketmortgage.com to take advantage. Here's another great reason to work with us. For a record nine years in a row, J.D. Power has ranked Quicken Loans highest in the nation in customer satisfaction for primary mortgage origination. Again, to lock in today's low mortgage interest rate and get the security of our exclusive rate shield approval, call us today at 800-QUICKEN or go to rocketmortgage.com. For J.D. Power award information, visit jdpower.com. Rate shield approval only valid on certain 30-year fixed rate loans. Call for cost information and conditions. Equal housing lender. License in all 50 states. NMLS number 3030. Hi, welcome to this Subway ad for the new Sesame Ginger Glaze Chicken Signature Wrap. How would you like it? I'll take a... Sports announcer at home? Yeah, how'd you... We just know. My wife picks up the new signature wrap. It's got double the rotisserie style chicken mixed with a sesame ginger glaze. She appears annoyed at me, but she shrugs it off. Those sweet and savory flavors are calling her name. She lifts the wrap and she takes the bite. Incredible. And now she's closing the door on my subway. Make it what you want. Limited time only at participating restaurants. Double meat based on average six inch sub. Today, this breakfast isn't just breakfast. It might be the first McDonald's breakfast you're having at McDonald's again. This lunch might be a weekly tradition you hadn't had in weeks. And this dinner might be the first one you bought for not just you in a while. Whatever this order is for you, McDonald's will be here to take it. Get more of the chicken you love with a delicious McChicken sandwich for $1. And for an extra buck, add a refreshing Dr. Pepper. Dining rooms are starting to reopen in certain communities. At participating McDonald's cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. The following program contains coarse language and adult themes. Listener discretion is advised.
It is Wednesday, my dudes. Otherwise known as Chat Lives Matter Night, right here live on KLR and Radio. Um, Stacy and I are the only confirmed act for the evening so far, so we're just going to kind of go until Stacy feels like she's gotten it all over her system, I guess. <laughs> anyway, so we're here, we're live. It could be a bloodbath. Well, yeah, yeah. Don't don't even get me started on that. Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, so we're here. We're live. It's KLR Radio, and this is whatever. And if you've been asleep at the switch, there's been lots of news in the last couple of days, which is why when Stacy found out that when Stacy found out there was space open behind us, she's like, "Does this mean we can go long? I I have I have things I have things." I'm like, "Uh, yeah, I guess." <laughs> Oh, we don't have to. I was just like, we won't come up on a hard stop. No, that's that's fine. I don't mind if we run a little bit over because I still haven't heard from Ordy one way or the other yet. So I figure if I haven't heard from him within the next little bit, this may just be all we do tonight. And I may go right and go to bed. <laughs> nice. But anyway. I may go read. I may go listen to Victor Davis Hanson. I don't know. So anyway, what, what, so 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 what's going on? What's going on with you? It's been about a week since we've done this thing, and I, I talk about eight to ten hours a day minimum, or eight to ten hours a week minimum. So, what's going what's on? What's going you? on with me? Yeah, what's going on with you? Uh, let's see. Today I split some mint plants, met some gardening folks to give them away. I started all my seedlings. This is like my Al podcast. Um, <laughs> making raw milk yogurt and. Reserve the cream. I'm going to make some butter. Um, and, you know, then I look at the news and my head wants to explode. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, uh, partly because I can't really, can't really afford it anymore right now. And partly because after they had, um, fucking Bruce Jenner on Fox News talking about the importance oh, of men God. getting colonoscopies. I was just done, so I... No, prostate exams. Well, it's worse than that. Well, prostate exams, colonoscopies, either way, it's just bad. Talking, colonoscopies, anyone can talk about, okay? Katie Couric talked <laughs> about colonoscopies. He was talking about prostate exams. Well, yeah, so, but anyway... I, In I've, a dress. I've let go of my YouTube... <laughs> uh, I've let go of my YouTube TV subscription, because even though I had everything planned out and thought I had more than enough money with everything that I've got coming in. Thanks to Biden's economy, I keep having to let shit go. So YouTube TV made it onto the chopping block because the whole, the whole reason I kept it, because I was really the only person in the house that watched it, was so that, you know, once or twice a week I could rotate back around to Fox News and watch what they were talking about. And I, I just don't care anymore. <laughs> yeah. I, I have ways to watch almost everything else that I want to watch without having to pay 70 bucks for TV. And the other thing that really annoys me is every other app anymore has the access to their actual live feed through their app. Fox News is the only one that doesn't do that. Even if you're paying for News Nation, you still have to, or not News Nation, for Fox Nation, you still have to confirm with them that you have an active cable subscription to be able to watch the Fox News live feed. And to me that's just BS. If I'm paying for your app, I should get everything. And honestly, at this point, oh, yeah, that's why I, I, I had Fox, um, when I had Fox Nation, when I cared what Tucker Carlson had to say um, <laughs> uh, and was there for his interviews and whatever, it always irked the hell. All you could get on the Fox Nation app with their subscription was the three prime times hosts. You couldn't see Fox News live. Uh, technically, you could because I remember doing it. But I also, at some point, it actually started saying, "I never could." Yeah, it was I just could. Literally, the three primetime hosts. You got like a you got like a free preview for like twenty minutes, and then it said, "Please log in with your yeah. cable subscription." And I don't. Yeah, that was. I it, didn't have I mean, cable. I, I so. couldn't sit there and like watch it like I can watch whatever's live on the Blaze and all their backlog, you know, or whatever is live on Daily Wire. It's not. It's not the same. No, I know. I, I, just, I misunderstood what you meant, but yeah, so, and for me, like I said, that was part of the reason why that, and I thought my kids would use it more, why I got YouTube TV, but my kids have gotten accustomed to just watching whatever the hell they want to watch on the apps, and so have I, so that's another, almost, and, and also, they raised the price by like 10 bucks a month, like a month after I, I paid for it, and I'm like, yeah, I don't know how much longer I'm going to hang on to this, I actually held on to it probably longer than I should have, but it's gone now, Um, and, I mean... 
I have to admit, it's 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 a little bit harder to get a hold of news now because everybody's gone to this whole thing of well, if you want to actually like even News Nation, I ha- I put their app on my TV because I have a Roku TV, and it says it's live. But if you turn it on, it's basically just a repeat of like the top five stories that they're talking about all day every day. So it's great for like a quick recap. Recap if I need some quick show notes or haven't talked th- thought about something to talk about. But every it's just th- this whole. I mean, and I'm I'm a capitalist. Don't get me wrong, but 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 I think we've gone into Ferengi capitalism, which is bad. I know you're not a Trekkie, so. You know. Oh. Oh, there you are. There we go. Where did I go? Okay. <laughs> there you go. Anyway. But yeah, so uh, yeah, after Bruce Jenner was on Fox News in full drag, I was done. So. But. Yeah. And yes, I said Bruce Jenner. I don't give a shit if, it, if, if it's called dead naming now. Dude still has his junk. He's a dude. Sorry. I might consider calling you by the pronouns you want to be called about if you're fully committed to your transition. And that's just a might. Oh, did you see that? Did you all, did you see that um, video that I stuck in uh, in our group chat about pronouns? It cracked me up. I'm not sure I did. Oh my gosh, we should, I should probably find that during the break and maybe we can play it because I laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed. It's the Gen X response to some millennial thing. My pronouns are not optional. They are mandatory. Oh, well, I don't know if I've seen the one that you sent, but I've seen like a hundred of those. And then, uh, yeah, the, the Gen X responses are funny. One guy is actually singing back and being and like, how the fuck am I supposed to know if we Yes, next? that's the one. <laughs> That's the one that cracks me up. I just, I I can't with these people. I mean, and the scary... I can't either because, you know, we're all taught in healthcare that you don't reinforce someone's delusions. Like, the the rudest thing you can do is, like, agree with that whatever... (laughs) With whatever a schizophrenic is hallucinating about. You don't, like, reinforce it. You try to reorient them to reality. But somehow the entire psychiatric world and the entire, like, I don't know, institutional mayu is now like, oh, now we're going to actually reinforce people's delusions because, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Yeah, it's just, very bizarre. Yeah, I just – I so the thing that drives me nuts about this, and I've been talking about this for forever, and you're one of the ones – that turned me on to this because I, I mean, even being a history buff, everything else is a term that I hadn't heard before until we started doing the morning show and I started paying more attention way back in the day. Uh, China's unrestricted warfare. What drives me crazy about all of this is I just saw a story today where, now granted, it's Christopher Ray, so take everything the asset says with a grain of salt, but he testified in front of Congress recently that China's cyber warfare capability outshines us by about 50 to 1. So even if we turned all of our cyber warfare assets to try to block a Chinese cyber attack, we would be outgunned 50 to 1. So while we are busily fighting over what pronouns everyone should use and making sure that our military is politically correct, China is gearing up to wipe us off the map by any means necessary, including cyber warfare, gender warfare, nuclear warfare, and germ warfare. And we're just like, ah. but here's the thing. Here's the thing I don't understand. I actually think they're still in the long game because who's going to buy their shit? I don't think they, I don't think they care anymore. <laughs> oh no, they do care. They absolutely care. Like they have a Potemkin economy. They have Potemkin cities all over the country. Like their economic health is not that great. And in about 20 years, they're going to be in a population desert. Nobody there is having more than one kid. And there aren't enough women for most marriageable age men to marry. Like if you talk to China experts, by twenty by 2035, Putin will not be able to field an army with military age men. And Xi is not that far behind. Yeah, I mean, I know, I know that's been the 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 common, you know, thought among the long game folks. I just, I, I, I think we've passed the tipping point of sanity. I mean, 
I don't know. I with everything with everything if, that if we're they seeing were that here. Close, if they were that close and they weren't playing the long game, they would not be shitting their pants and freaking out over a potential TikTok ban. They are relying on that algorithm to brainwash people in the next generation. So that by 2050, they don't have to do anything. Well, no. So I, I think I may not have made what I was trying to express very clear. My problem is if we don't wake up now, then they're going to be able to do all those things that they want to do within a generation or two because we're too busy fighting amongst oh, ourselves over shit that doesn't matter, um, which is kind of where I was trying to go with it. So I'm not necessarily saying that they've they've done away with the long game. The problem that I see is too many from this government – are joining in with the Chinese long game because they see it as the quickest way to get the power that they crave. And you can see this from the Biden administration, which has apparently been in bed with China for a very long time, regardless of what anybody wants us to know or to think. Uh, not to mention the fact that, I mean, I still don't understand this. And to, to, to change tax real quick, the whole uh, impeachment hearing thing, the one thing that I don't understand is why nobody from Congress has entered into evidence the video of Joe Biden admitting on a recording that he committed a quid pro quo while vice president while sitting in the country of Ukraine. Why has that not ever been entered into evidence? Because I heard AOC today have a meltdown, and so many other people have meltdowns today about how there's no proof of any crimes or wrongdoing. He's on videotape as the vice president admitting that he committed a quid pro quo. And the, th the thing is, I found a cut of that that I hadn't heard before. So for years, the only one that I've heard is the one where basically it ends where, you know, and sure enough, six hours later, son of a bitch, he was fired. And then they put in a guy that, that was willing to work with us. There, there's a whole, like, two-minute spiel in front of that where he basically says that part of the reason that Ukraine was able to secure the funding in the first place is because they had promised him they were going to do something about that prosecutor, and they didn't, which is why he said they weren't getting the money. I mean, we've got him on tape doing 10, time, 10 million times worse than what Donald Trump supposedly did in a phone call. Oh, no, in person. I know. And but we've had that tape forever. I know that, but again, my question is, since all of the Democrats keep saying there's no there there, why has nobody on the impeachment committee said if there's no there there, please explain this video and enter it into evidence? I mean, you want to talk about you want to talk about a smoking gun. I mean, this is part of the reason why I don't trust either party anymore. Yeah, I don't I don't trust either party either. Um, but I mean, Joe Biden is not going to be impeached. I, I, God, it's all just so depressing. And I'm really mad at Ben Shapiro right now. Uh oh, why are you mad at Ben Shapiro? Because I had the idea like years ago. To do good Trump, bad Trump, and he actually put it to music and did it before me, so now we can't do it. You should have said something. I would. I don't think you ever told me. I would have figured out a way to get it done. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. It, well, it was actually like, yeah, it was while he was president the first time, and I, I had grudgingly decided that I was going to have to like get on board, and I couldn't be never Trump anymore. Um. So yeah. But anyway, and I can't be never Trump now, but, and honestly, the, like, died in the wall, never Trumpers, like, RB, just drive me nuts. Um, I'm gonna have to vote for him. They make me defend him because I just can't stand lying liars lie. Um, this whole bloodbath thing just sent me right over the edge. <laughs> Dude. Right over the edge. And I work in a place where TVs are on all the time, and I'm watching all of these people watch MSNBC, and my blood pressure is just going through the fucking roof. Uh, <laughs> That's fucking lie. In my head, I'm screaming. Um, when, when you're forced to listen to Rachel Madcow. Oh God, I got I got to find the mood clip again now. She's starting to make the rounds again, so I got to find the mood clip again. <laughs> 
Oh my I god. Just, it's just like you're being lied to. I you're know. being lied to. And I just want to come home and bake a cake. And I know that's not good for me. The thing about it is most of them on some level know they're being lied to. It's just the lie that they're most comfortable with. We've, we've gotten this way on both sides. Whatever flavor of lie we are the most comfortable with is the one that we cling to and the one, the one that we will defend at all costs. And that's why it's become so hard for me to try to snap people out of this crap because the truth of it is neither party gives a damn about us. All they care about is being able to hold on to their power. And the problem that I have had with Donald Trump and I, like you, can't be never Trump anymore because he's the nominee. And I'll be damned if I'm going to try to put this country through four more years of breezy puddinghead. But at the same time, he is now a politician by definition. And I don't trust any of them any further than I could throw them because none of them give a damn about any of us. And I, I think he has become one of those people. I hope I'm wrong, and if he wins the election, I hope he does at least or accomplishes at least some of what he says he's going to try to do. But after a story that I found from the Blaze today, talking about how corrupt is uh, the United, how corrupt the United States Capitol Police is from the top down, I don't see any way that DC can be saved short of you know things I can't say without potentially having our broadcast pulled. I. Uh, I, I don't know where I don't I don't know where we go, where we go from here. I I just know that you know watching AOC <laughs> submit into the record that Rico is not a crime. I had so much fun tagging Fanny Willis with that. Be like, hey, case dismissed. She's that so. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's all I can do anymore is just troll people and laugh. Because... But I mean, it's just it's like, and everybody's like, he, Rico is a statue. There are crimes in the statue. I'm like, first of all, she's not going to sleep with you. <laughs> Second of all, if she'd ever shut her horse face, this very successful businessman could have explained to her what he was talking about, but she wouldn't shut her horse face. It's because she didn't want him to Third. say what he was talking about. <laughs> I know, I know that, you know that, but all her white knights were all over my TL. And this one girl's like defending it. And I'm like, look, honey, she's just the hot, crazy chick that all these guys' mothers warn them about. They just want to be dominated. So just, just let them run. Just let them run and mute them. <laughs> oh. It's just like, oh, oh, just listening to her voice. I mean, I can't stand congressional hearings anyway because it's just all about the grandstand. It's all about the sound bite. It's all about their next election. It's just, it doesn't go anywhere. I want serious people to do serious things. I want serious people to do serious things like, for example, um, you know, I want, I want Mike Lee to get back to A1A or a, AP1A. The, the legislation he had that was going to limit the the um, the power of the executive agencies by saying if they were going to have some, if they were going to promulgate a regulation that had um, a consequence of jail time or a fine over two thousand dollars, it had to be reviewed by Congress. Or if it was a regulation that was going to have more than X dollars of impact on the economy, it had to be reviewed by Congress, and Congress had to approve it. I mean, that would have stopped it. And, and that's Congress's job. Congress's job is to make laws. What we have now is the regulatory agencies making laws. So Mike Lee and Barry Loudermilk and a bunch of really good folks in D.C., and not all of them are good, and there aren't many good ones, but there are some. They had this going into the 2016 election. They had the first two years of Trump when they could have got it done, and just it was a clown show. We need serious people to do serious things, and that's why I supported Ron DeSantis. I still want – if I'm being honest, I still want Ron DeSantis. There's just no way. I still want Ron DeSantis. But, and I mean, what is – why is Trump attacking him now? Because he didn't bend the knee. He did bend the knee. He endorsed him. That's, that's not bending the knee to Trump. He, he, he's well, the, well like, what does he want him to do? Kiss the ring. He doesn't want him to campaign with them because Ron DeSantis is, is is too much his own person. He can overshadow Trump. But he didn't kiss the ring. 
that that's why. Not to mention the not is as much as kissing that like like. Not, what Mike not, Pence not to Trump. did was objectionable. Why doesn't he like attack Mike Pence instead of what is ostensibly the best Republican governor in my lifetime? Because it had the, this is the Trump show again. Do you not remember 2015, 2016? This is why I didn't okay, want to perform like, the first time. <laughs> we're in season seven of this shit now, and the writers are getting getting lazy. No, we're still stuck in season. We, we need, we're still we stuck need in season five. Unanticipated or un like surprising in a pleasant kind of way to keep watching this show. We're still stuck in stuck in season five version two because everybody knows every show ever created sucks in season five, and we're kind of stuck in that now. Um, no, no, no. <laughs> they suck in season five, and season six they just get fucking weird. And by seven, it's time for cancellation. <laughs> yeah. Well, unfortunately. The uh, the boomers have decided that they want geriatric grudge match. The boomers in Iowa. Uh, I mean, it's not just necessary. I mean, unfortunately, he did, he did still win fairly decently in most states. I mean, I, I get everybody's argument. Let's look at the numbers going. There's no way he's going to win the general because there's still too much of a, of a it's not even a plurality at this point because even DeSantis was pulling numbers. Um, and then, of course, everybody was laughing because DeSantis came in third in his own state. And I'm like, you realize, like, most of the people that were going to vote for DeSantis are going to vote for Trump now because he's head to. So you making fun of him coming okay, in third in his not, own state. Not only stupid. that. <laughs> you can look at the polling after 2021 or 2022. People really believed that Trump was bad for the party. His handpicked candidates lost. Right. Fundraising was in the shitter. Like, all of this bad stuff happened in 2022. And Ron DeSantis was going up until the first indictment. And then it was over. The Republican base went, ur, 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 and did exactly what the people who are structuring all this lawfare thought they would do. If we attack this guy, they're all going to move to him. And while I think everything that's happening to him is bullshit, okay, it's ridiculous, it's banana republic level stuff, it doesn't mean I want him to be president again. Nope. I want serious people who are going to do serious things. But to, to try we to are in serious trouble economically, foreign policy wise. We are in serious trouble. We need serious people to do serious things. I just really hope whatever the Heritage Foundation is putting together in terms of staffing, um, I hope they're doing a bang-up job. I hope they're getting serious people and not the freaking Seb Gorkas and, and other people like that that are going to fail after six months because it's hard. Like You better be ready to be attacked over and over and over and over and over again. Oh, it's going to be so much fun. He'd do better. He'd do better staffing his administration with people like me and Politimony. <laughs> Just don't know what people think. <laughs> you know, we've been through the ringer in public and okay, whatever. <laughs> I mean, uh, not people are going to get their fifis hurt. Well, I mean, so, so this is what drives me crazy though, right? Because when it comes to the left, that's what I hear everybody from the right saying is, oh, my God, the left leads with their feelings, and they do this, and they do that. So logically speaking, we know that another four years of Joe Biden is likely going to damn this country in ways that we cannot possibly comprehend. But because the right doesn't like the person that's been put at the top of the ticket, now it's I see never Trumper after never Trumper screaming, let it all burn. And I don't mean never Trumper like the diehard fucking, like, you know, Captain Stoopings, Stoopings of the world. I mean, like, actual people that, you know, voted for Trump at least once and are just like, I'm done with him. I don't want anything to do with him anymore. He's toxic. I, I get all of that. Well, I mean, I think you see I think you see more of that on Twitter because Twitter is a, a place of exaggerations. Like, I don't know too many people like that in real life. I know a lot of people that are disappointed. Um, but... I also know a lot of people that are just not going to let Joe Biden win under any circumstances. I'm just hoping that's, you know, look at, I mean, like what, what, how stupid do you have to be (laughs) 
to look at gas prices currently in an election year, okay, how either stupid or corrupt, because you know you're going to win, you have to be. I should change that. So look at gas prices on the rise going into summer. They're only going to go higher. Yeah. Okay. And then putting out a regulation that says we're all going to buy these stupid electric vehicles that Hertz is trying to get rid of. Like you're not going to have a choice because this is where we're taking the industry. We're picking winners and losers and the combustion engine is over. So much fun, ain't it? Did okay, they, did... Hertz can't rent these things. Oh, I know. The Her... dealerships can no longer sell them. All the diehard greenies have already bought one. Hertz was try- Hertz was basically trying to give them away, but they they were selling them off because nobody was renting them at like some. They're at, well, at, why, at... Oh, wait, okay, I used to travel for work all the time. I would pick up a rental car three weeks out of the month. The last thing I would want to pick up is an electric vehicle in a city I don't know where I have no idea where I'm going to freaking charge this thing. What were they thinking? They're thinking. You know, my 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 parents and my sister both have a hybrid. They have a plug-in at home, and they can use gas if they had to. If you were going to convert your fleet, the smart thing to do would have been to hybrid it. Or to start manufacturing the engine that was shown to Barack Obama in 2014, 2015 that Israel's developed that runs on actual water and it separates the hydrogen. The engine runs on the hydrogen and oxygen comes out the tailpipe. I mean, if if we're, if we really, and this is what irritates me about the granola eating hemp wearing pot smoking hippie crowd is they're still pushing technology from the sixties. Like it's brand new when we have actual solutions, we can create biodegradable plastic very easily, which would get rid of how many trash islands if we converted to that. We could save acres of trees by using hemp to make paper because hemp creates three times more paper per acre than trees do. We can make biodegradable plastic from hemp, but because of polyester being the American chosen petroleum-based fabric that everybody wants, and because of the polyester lobby, hemp is illegal, and that's part of the reason why marijuana is still federally considered a Schedule One narcotic, because it took out its hemp cousin, which is why even though the granola-eating, hemp-wearing, pot-smoking crowd wants weed to be legal again federally, it can't be, and it won't be, as long as we keep kowtowing to these lobbyists. And the problem with the lobbyists is they're just as bad on both sides. They don't, again, they don't care about me and you. They only care about their bottom line. You know one of the scariest things? You know how I'm pretty sure we're headed towards a stock market crash that nobody's talking about? Everybody, like the two biggest people in BlackRock, are selling off like crazy. They're getting out of the stock market. It's a bad mm-hmm. indicator. Everything's about to crash, and nobody's talking about it. The only thing that might change it is if we put somebody in the White House that understands how the markets are supposed to work. But with the problem with that is the same people that are telling you Donald Trump is going to be a dictator have already taken steps to make sure that he can't do anything to start cutting back on the administrative branches unelected bureaucrats because joe biden is signing order after order after order to protect them but donald trump is 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 the is is the dictator he willingly left even though he was 99 percent sure they stole the election he left joe biden is starting to be afraid that he's going to lose so he's taking steps to make sure the next guy can't do anything who's the dictator oh i know What is this? Apparently there's a college redefining racism. Minorities can be bigots, but all whites are racist. To hell? <laughs> According to David Col- Davidson College, a private institution in North Carolina, if you are white, you are a racist. If you are a person of color, you can be prejudiced or bigoted, but you can't be racist. So all whites are racist. Is that kind of like all cops are bastards? I've kind of seen a trend here. <laughs> 
Well, it's just, you know, um, Joe Biden's losing on the border. He's losing on Israel. Like, he's so concerned with keeping his left wing base quiet because they're very loud, very noisy, very disruptive and awful. Right. Um, and they'll like go to his go to his rallies and make a scene and whatever else. So he's trying to stop them from doing that. And so concerned about the votes of the Hamas Knicks in Michigan that he's going so far to the left that he's going to lose the middle. Well, I hope he loses that. I, just, I, I hope he loses everything. I every don't video. understand the strategy. I don't understand what they're doing. I don't understand who they think is going to vote for them. Under these circumstances, I don't, I, I still believe that most of the country is good. And I don't believe that you get to pander to blatant anti Semites and win. I just, I don't think we're that far gone yet. I have to believe that we're not because that's just awful. I think France might be that far gone. Germany might be that far gone. I don't think we are yet. I, I I think we're a lot closer than we want to admit. I don't think we're quite there yet. I think if Biden wins again, it's all done. I don't I don't even think it'll. I agree I with you. I agree with you. I'm just I don't think we're there yet. I think there are still I think there are still enough good moral people who are quiet because they're concerned. But hopefully, in the privacy of a voting booth, we'll say this has gone too far. Yeah, and that's the other thing, you know, because everybody talks about the polls and, you know, how they're st- statistical dead heat, this, that, and the other. Look at the polls! Would, 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 you, would you admit that you, I mean, you know, other than people that do what we do, would you admit that you were going to vote for Trump if you were everyday Joe America at this point? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't discuss politics at work. I mean, well, that's partly because we've been told we can't. I mean, everywhere I've ever worked, you're not even supposed to bring up politics at all. I mean, and that was even when I was in. That was but I mean, I don't I discuss uniform. politics. I mean, everything's politics. Well, there's very little that you can talk about that's not political. Ordy's in the house. <laughs> there he is. It's the Amish. So, but I mean, it's just. Um, I don't know. I just have to believe. I, I mean, even younger people I know that are pretty left that have Jewish friends and families are appalled at what they're doing. Even some young college educated. So. Yeah. I mean, I, and I, I think because of how far the left is trying to drag things, I think the Overton window is moving again. So uh, we won't know for sure until November. But my problem is, is after, and, and I've said this over and over and over again, you can't, I, I get it. Everybody tells me I'm wrong, but we watched it happen in real time where people basically took their ball, went home and said, oh, counting is going to resume by about nine o'clock Eastern tomorrow morning because we're having issues. And then I woke up to get ready to do the morning show at 5 in the morning my time, and the ballot fairy showed up. I've never seen anything like that before. And the problem that I have with all of this is we, and I say we not necessarily collectively because I know Georgia has tried to fix it, and I know there are other jurisdictions that have, but for the most part, the Republicans haven't changed their game enough to combat what the Democrats did November of 2020. And I don't know, especially now that it's being, they've made the RNC nepotism to us. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know how, I don't, I okay. don't, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to go out on a limb here. If you're going to have a Trump on the RNC, Laura Trump is probably the smartest out of all of them. Oh no, I don't disagree. Just having, <laughs> like, having her if, on there. If, is you're, just... if you're going to go in that direction, <laughs> pick the bright one. Um, <laughs> just saying, but, um, 
well, I, I mean, I tried to outline this in an article and I think sometimes I put all the things together in my brain and what I write, I think is clear and it might not be as clear as it should be. Um, but you have to really look at the multi-pronged approach that the left is taking to some of these things. And they did a trial run in Michigan and they're replaying it in Ohio right now. Dude. They turned Michigan blue through a very deliberate set of steps. And they're taking the same set of steps in Ohio as we speak. Did you see the guy on the left that won his primary in Ohio and gave his entire speech not in English? I think that was no. Ohio. Kind of scared the crap out of me when I saw it. Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, but Ohio's red enough. They're not going to go for that. But, but, the, but the fact that they're even trying it in Ohio terrifies me. Because that's just another way for them to try to nudge that window just that much more to the left. I I mean, I... I I mean, the entire ex- the the entire victory speech was was it was in whatever the hell what what is it um fucking Farsi or whatever whatever language those oh really yeah <laughs> oh like, wonderful I was like what <laughs> yeah <laughs> even oh, wow. even Cal was like dude isn't there some bot that's supposed to translate things like this in English it would be really nice if the rest of us could hear what he actually said. Because he was getting a lot of cheers in Ohio, in a foreign language, it was kind of weird. <laughs> Are you sure that wasn't Michigan? Uh, I'm pretty sure it was Ohio. Okay, awesome. Um, Let me see if I can find it. Yeah. Here. But there's people that are way smarter than me, and I'm kind of taking their word for it. Um. Ohio could easily split in the most bizarre way possible. So here's what they do. They put ballot measures out to juice progressive turnout, specifically the unions in Ohio. So they've got a minimum wage ballot measure going on the ballot. You know the unions are going to come out to vote for that, right? That's to get Sherrod Brown over the finish line. But right now it's showing the most bizarre and and <laughs> weighted split ticket for Sherrod Brown and Trump in Ohio. So we're going to lose a winnable Senate seat in Ohio. At the same time, they're trying to put the... Um, Same kind of voting rights crap that they put in Michigan in the Constitution in Ohio. And they're also trying to do the same kind of nonpartisan redistricting group that's in in Michigan. They're trying to do it all at once. They did it over a period of years in Michigan. And they're just trying to shove it down Ohio's throat. And the only thing that's standing in the way right now is Ohio's AG. Because they're like, yeah, this one. You've named it misleadingly. It doesn't say it doesn't accurately represent what you're actually trying to do. So go back to the drawing board on the voting rights part of it. It basically eliminates the use of voter ID for the foreseeable future and opens the door for jackasses like Mark Elias to come in and sue and sue and sue and sue and sue sue again. On any election security measure. Wait, what? This is exactly what they did on this is exactly what they did on the on the abortion thing in Ohio. That was funded through Arabelle Advisors, which takes foreign money from a Swiss billionaire and then pours it into these types of initiatives, which is really not supposed to happen. So Ohio is in the midst of trying to make it illegal for groups to participate in the ballot measures if they take foreign funding which only seems correct to me. Um, But yeah, like all of these have a significant amount of money coming from Arabella funds that take money from foreign, foreign uh, donors. If you want to see a dark money operation, look at Arabella advisors. Everything like 
Arabella is so good at this. George Soros and his little democracy fund people have decided to put a significant portion of their money through Arabella. That's how dark that thing is. You won't be able to hear about Soros prosecutors anymore because there won't be a direct trail from the Open Society Foundation. Whoa. Oh. All right, we should probably take a break. We haven't taken one yet. It just dawned on me that we hadn't taken a break yet. I was looking for that story that I was talking about to figure out for sure if it was Ohio. I'm pretty sure it was, but for some reason I can't find the story now. Anyway, I don't know. Maybe there was a timeline shift before I started the show. CERN's been doing some weird shit again. All right, anyway, we're taking a break. This is the Whatever Show. I'm Rick. She's Daisy. Back with some more on the other side. Stay tuned. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. This is Derek's O'Reilly Auto Parts story. After the third time jump-starting my car, I finally realized my battery was dying. So I stopped by O'Reilly to have it checked. They tested it right there in the parking lot. It was bad, real bad. But they helped me find the right battery for my car and even installed it for free. Now my car starts like new. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. Hi, I'm Jay Farner, CEO of Quicken Loans, America's largest mortgage lender. Spring will be here soon, so if buying a new home is on your to-do list, right now is the time to call Quicken Loans. Learn about which mortgage options make sense for you and get a jump on your competition. With our exclusive Rate Shield approval, the low rate you lock today is protected for up to 90 days while you shop for your new home. With a Rate Shield approval, if rates go up, your low rate stays locked. But if rates go down, you get that new, even lower rate. Either way, you win. Talk to us today at 800-QUICKEN or go to rocketmortgage.com to take advantage. Here's another great reason to work with us. For a record nine years in a row, J.D. Power has ranked Quicken Loans highest in the nation in customer satisfaction for primary mortgage origination. Again, to lock in today's low mortgage interest rate and get the security of our exclusive rate shield approval, call us today at 800-QUICKEN or go to rocketmortgage.com. For J.D. Power award information, visit jdpower.com. Rate shield approval only valid on certain 30-year fixed rate loans. Call for cost information and conditions. Equal housing lender. License in all 50 states. NMLS number 3030. Hi, welcome to this Subway ad for the new Sesame Ginger Glaze Chicken Signature Wrap. How would you like it? I'll take a... Sports announcer at home? Yeah, how'd you... We just know. My wife picks up the new signature wrap. It's got double the rotisserie style chicken mixed with a sesame ginger glaze. She appears annoyed at me, but she shrugs it off. Those sweet and savory flavors are calling her name. She lifts the wrap and she takes the bite. Incredible. And now she's closing the door on my subway. Make it what you want. Limited time only at participating restaurants. Double meat based on average six inch sub. Today, this breakfast isn't just breakfast. It might be the first McDonald's breakfast you're having at McDonald's again. This lunch might be a weekly tradition you hadn't had in weeks. And this dinner might be the first one you bought for not just you in a while. Whatever this order is for you, McDonald's 
will be here to take it. Get more of the chicken you love with a delicious McChicken sandwich for $1. And for an extra buck, add a refreshing Dr. Pepper. Dining rooms are starting to reopen in certain communities at participating McDonald's. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. The following program contains coarse language and adult themes. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome back into the program, ladies and gentlemen. Program, programming reminder, just got an update from the Amish. He has to work early tomorrow, so since everyone else has requested the night off, this will be the only Chat Lives Matter night entertainment for the evening. So Stacy and I are going to run for a little bit longer just so you guys can hang out for a little bit longer. And then I'm going to go get some other work done and try to go to bed early. But every time I say that, I jinx myself, so I should probably stop saying it. Um, one point of... Uh, correctness on my part apparently the election that i was referencing was for the ohio state house third district but it was uh rep ismail muhammad who is from somalia and rarely spoke english on his campaign and gave his entire primary victory speech last night not in english in ohio Are you starting to figure out how broken things really are? You know? Oh, <laughs> the number of immigrants who have invaded this country under Joe Biden, um, the population is larger than that of 36 states. Yep. And the funniest thing about all that is for three years, everyone in, in the administration told us the border was secure. We don't know what these people are talking about. We're not being invaded. And then an election year happened. And Joe Biden, I want to fix the border, but the Republicans won't let me. I've never wanted to commit elder abuse in my life. Until now. <laughs> yeah, I'm just at the point in my life where I want to watch food reels on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I was there for a while, but then I realized that that's part of what got us here. So I, I can't, I don't really feel like I can put my head back in the sand. And I'm not faulting anybody who does. And yes, even I unplug from time to time, which is why I've decided that since I, because since I retired from the day job, I've been doing radio seven days a week for the most part in one form or another. So I decided that Monday is going to be my day off. I'm not going to write. I'm not going to do radio. I'm just going to chill because I need the decompress day. Six days a week is enough. I need the decompress day. And the sad thing is, even though that's what I keep telling myself, Monday will probably be the day that I get caught up on all the administrative crap it takes to run this thing that I have to do with, too. So it's not really going to be a day off. It'll just be the day that I'm not in the public eye in one form or another. But at least I can do that from my laptop in my room. <laughs> so it's still kind of a day off. But anyway, so, uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. Um, I mean, <laughs> in between watching, like I said, AOC make a fool of herself today, which, which gives me joy. Don't get me wrong. It gives me joy. And then watching Joe Biden just make gaff after gaff after gaff still. And his, his, his team bragging about his 300 and some odd dollar shoes that make it better for him to walk and harder for him to fall down. When most Americans oh can't Can even I afford just, food. Like, <laughs> those shoes? Oh my god. What about them? Other than the fact that they make him look even All of my co-workers wear them. <laughs> nice. Oh, I don't know how I feel about that. Those like, they're running shoes. shoes. They're people for, like, they're for people who do serious activities. They, like, gave them to him because they're, like, walking on rafts. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I got nothing. <sighs> An 11-hour run? Where are you running, Artie? 
They've been working him like 12 hour days. <laughs> I don't know what he does. I know I still have coffee extract. Coffee extract. It sounds yummy. Well, I've been using the vanilla extract. Oh my god, it's so good. It's so good. I'm so glad I make it, and I will be making it again. And and the peppermint extract is also very, very awesome. So, did did you hear the, the, the new news about Fanny Wilson? Fanny Wilson? Fanny Willis? Will, Fanny? Will, Will, Willis. You mean Wilson, Fanny? Whatever. No, I said what I said. <laughs> You mean Fanny? I know Fanny. I said what I said. I don't care. <laughs> I said what I said. But yeah, I'm so, just saying. So apparently, the judge who didn't disqualify her has granted Trump the right to appeal to try to have her disqualified anyway. Which anybody who thought a white judge was going to disqualify a black person of color district attorney in modern America was insane. I'm just saying. The dude watched all the SCOTUS judges have protests in their front yard over Roe v. Wade, and you thought he was going to be like, yeah, she she messed up. We got to get, get rid of her. No, but that's why he's kicking it to another judge. You want to touch it? Fine. Leave me out. Because <laughs> she deserves to be disqualified, but nobody wants to say that because you can't say that anymore because all white people are racist, remember? But yeah, so so that happened, I, I guess, today at some point. I don't know. Like I said, I just want to, I just want to create like the perfect sourdough starter. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I just. <laughs> should we just start? Should we turn whatever into a baking show? Would that make you? Would that make you happier? <laughs> oh my god! I made the best bread. <laughs> like it's this honey oat nut wheat. Mm. Nice. Mm. Yeah. And I'll tell you, um, I'm making raw milk yogurt. Um, like I'm trying to do all the right things. Yeah. All the things they tell you will kill you when in reality what they're trying to make is eat will kill you. Huh? I said all the things that the government tells you will kill you when in reality what they've approved for us to eat will likely be what kills you. <laughs> yeah, well. I don't know. You see, like I said, you're seeing this movement among young people. They're learning all the old school stuff. And it's pretty awesome. I'm a fan. So speaking of, you know, movements, I saw something or heard about something that I didn't even know was a thing before. Um, and I, I know we have a host who, you know, is supposed to be an Amish, but everybody knows that, you know, not really. Um, so Scott Pressler put out a tweet about a week or so ago that he was actually registering Amish people to vote. I didn't even know that was a thing, because as far as I knew, most Amish... Yeah, but you know what happened, don't you? Uh-uh. Okay, so... They... They started, the USDA started prosecuting this Amish farmer up in Pennsylvania who was selling direct to consumer. And that has really like sent ripples throughout the Amish and Mennonite community. And so even though they're not supposed to vote, they really just want to be left the fuck alone. So maybe they're going to vote so they can be left the fuck alone. (laughs) Well, no. So, so, well, that, that I knew, but that, that was kind of what I was getting to though is for the Amish to start becoming involved in the affairs of what they still call the English is kind of unheard of. So this just kind of shows you how much the Biden overreach is starting to piss everybody off when you've got the buggy crowd wanting to get rid of Joe Biden. (laughs) Mm -hmm. There are horses on the highway. Oh, sorry. There are horses on the highway. I finally saw that video. I hadn't seen it yet. I didn't realize it was an actual thoroughbred that had busted loose and was running down a highway in Philadelphia. I was like, oh, but you crap. got you got to hear you got to hear Beck say it. It cracks me up. 
Oh no! Every I, time I'm, he says it, I've I just been, start laughing and laughing and laughing. He still works it in usually about once an episode at least. Oh no! It was like five or six times this morning. There are horses on the highway. Yeah, I think I only listened to him for about an hour today. I I overslept. Normally Wednesdays when I try to write more because usually more people are off, so I usually try to cram in a bunch of writing. And then for the last couple of days, I think it's because I've been fighting something off. It's like I went from not being able to sleep at all to now I'm sleeping 10, 11 hours even when I try to get up earlier. So I, I think I'm trying to fight something off. But So far, I will admit that since I'm not completely stressed out all the time, my health has been a lot better. I was talking about that with the word of the other day. It's like normally by November, December, anytime I try to do juxtaposition, it sounds like I'm dying, and I didn't ha- I, that didn't happen this year, so or this this, this time, so okay, I'm kind of happy. So things things are improving. The intermittent fasting is working. I uh, weighed myself today after I ate lunch, which I used to cringe at, and I actually am still weighing in almost at the weight I was in the middle of my stress for my divorce because I was down to 262 at one point. I have 268 as of today, and I was ba- almost back up to 300 pounds again, which is why I was like, okay, nice. got to make changes, and then I have. So, but uh, I think it helps that I'm finding some natural supplements that you can add to your diet and stuff to help trigger your metabolism again, plus intermittent fasting kind of does that anyway. I can't do the intermittent, intermittent fasting because of my schedule. Um, that would leave me like not eating a couple days a week. So, hey, twenty-four. Yeah, that doesn't there. really work for me. I just I started doing the meal prepping in forty thirty thirty. No, I mean you know there, there's lots of different ways that you can do it. I mean the the one thing that I will say for anybody that's trying to figure out how to lose weight, you got to stop eating fast food all the time. Oh yeah. I don't eat any of that. The other thing you really have to do is just make sure that you're operating in a calorie deficit every day. It's really that simple. Try to remove at least some of the processed foods from your diet and try to make sure that you're operating at a calorie deficit every day. The other good thing is if you have a normal enough schedule and you're not somebody that works a schedule like Stacy, try to make sure that you're done eating before 8, 8 p.m., 8.30 at the latest because your body actually processes food better at night while you're sleeping but if you throw a bunch in there right before you go to sleep it's going to turn it into fat instead of burning so don't do that either <laughs> well let's see i have started ordering from a csa for um organic produce um i'm trying to figure out how to get more of my meat from the same uh, i found one source for raw milk i think i'm going to change it to a different source um just because, I, I don't know, these cows, holy shit, it's like got the most fat of any milk I've ever seen. So I'd be mostly making butter with this. Um, Probably be really good butter, though. Well, I want to get, I want to be able to make the yogurt, and I want to be able to make the raw milk kefir. I'm a big kefir fan. I cannot do kombucha, but I can do kefir. And here's another, like, really simple little trick that I love. Um, there's a soda called Poppy, P-O-P-P-I. Yeah. And it is sweetened with inulin, which is a prebiotic, so it actually supports gut health. It has less than 20 calories, and it also has apple cider vinegar, which helps with weight loss. So um, it's like a little shot of something sweet and bubbly that makes you happy, and it also helps you straighten out your gut. Because it feeds the good bacteria. And they've got all kinds of flavors. They got clat, like a cola flavor. They got root beer. They got a Dr. Pepper. And they've got all kinds of fruit flavors. Orange, strawberry lemonade, cherry limeade, grape. I mean, it's pretty fantastic. And I'll tell you the Dr. Pepper. I'm not the biggest Dr. Pepper fan. But it was pretty right on. <laughs> Dude. My daughter may love you for that because I don't let her buy soda anymore, <laughs> and she loves Dr Pepper. <laughs> well, I mean it's it's only got it's got um, five grams or less of sugar, less than twenty calories. Um, it's sweetened with inulin and stevia, 
And I've had stevia sweetened sodas, and normally I don't like them, but these are really good. Really good. Yeah, I have to look into that. How can I not be a Dr. Pepper fan the same way I can eat pineapple on pizza, Ordy? Okay, show's over. We're done. Just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, I hated pineapple on pizza until I moved to the West Coast, and then, and still for months, I picked it off. But I, I, when I moved to Seattle, Friday was pizza day, and it was the the it was the old school square pizza, um, not necessarily like you know cafeteria lady pizza because it was still in a foil carton and you can tell they had it shipped in but it was pepperoni and pineapple the problem was and i didn't know this at first because nobody told me um all the cheese was on the top so the first pizza day at school i'm like oh we eat pizza yay and then i buy it in i'm like oh my god what, what is that and they're like oh did you not pay attention to the lunch menu it says pepperoni pizza with pineapple in small print just underneath pepperoni i was like all i read was pepperoni i what is this shit but so yeah, for for months I would p- peel the cheese off, pick all the pineapples off, throw the cheese back down, and try to eat the pizza. But then the juice from the pineapple had still soaked into everything anyway. So eventually I gave up and started eating pepperoni and pineapple pizza, which which is a sin all all in of itself. If you're gonna have pineapple and pizza, there's really only two ways you should have it: Hawaiian barbecue pizza and Canadian bacon and pineapple. Pepperoni and pineapple is sacrilege upon sacrilege, and I don't know who came up with that idea in Washington State schools, but I would like to thump them. But since we accidentally segued into Washington, did you hear that the Washington State Supreme Court has decided that the bar exam is racist, so they're not requiring attorneys to pass the bar exam anymore? Yes, I've heard that. I'm not moving back there. I had actually thought about it at one point, and I had friends there that were trying to talk me out of it, and I was still kind of considering it, but... Um, Yeah, I I, I think, uh, as I've said before, if we ever finally get a wall built, it needs to take a sharp right at Nevada and keep going until it hits Canada, or as I like to call it, the European Union. Because the left coast, all in all, is pretty much a lost cause at this point. Love you, Ordy, but it's true. So, remember when, and this was a long time ago, when they first really started trying to come after Donald Trump for the whole, not the Stormy Daniels thing, but the E. Jean Carroll thing, and they were, like, changing all these statutes of limitations and this, that, and the other to try to make it a criminal case, and then that didn't work. So they went after and changed a lot of the civil statutes so they could go after him, and we kept saying this was a bad idea. You don't know what you're getting yourself into. It's going to get you, too. You just don't understand it yet. Uh... Mayor Eric Adams is now facing a multi-million dollar lawsuit against a victim who alleges that she sexu- that he sexually assaulted her and exposed a member to her mem- his member to her over 30 years ago. Yep. Well, you notice Christine Blasey Ford was making the rounds again, so maybe maybe um they're trying to re-up the whole idea of um you know uh, resurfaced memories like I don't know I don't know yeah I just I I mean the, 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 to, to bring up you know Barack Obama's pastor chickens are coming home to roost because we told you guys not to do this shit I mean look at what the the AG of New York has done to their economic centers they have real estate developers pulling out left right and center because of this whole Trump debacle, right? It, it's just insane. There, there's gonna it, it. The last time I saw any pictures of New York City, because I remember when I was a kid, they would show it on TV, and it always looked like it was dingy, dark, dirty, gross. And then '90s, early 2000s, you started seeing it show back up in TV shows and stuff again. So all of a sudden, everybody was talking about it again, and it was clean. The sky wasn't gross. There wasn't a bunch of trash on the ground. Now you look at still shots of New York City, and it looks like it's part of a third world country. What do you think is going to happen when all the real estate developers leave? It's going to go back to dirt roads because there's going to be no taxes. <laughs> these people are just, these people are destroying themselves, and they're taking us with them. But I'm not a fan. I still 
came flashing back to this Davidson University story that all whites are racist. I just, <laughs> Although I basically got told as much when I commented on one of the local news channels Facebook pages here about the whole Fanny Fanny Willis case where she didn't get dismissed and I said the same thing that I just said on the air and somebody called me a race baiter. Like, no, just being honest. Mm. <laughs> Interesting. Just being honest. Because, you know. Oh, oh, another little quick hit just because it's fun. Um, so, Glad has decided that the term homosexual is defamatory and we should stop using it immediately. Okay. So Glad basically just said, don't say gay. After yelling at Florida. Uh-huh. <laughs> about, oh, supposedly, don't say gay. <laughs> so confused. I'm so confused. I don't understand any of these people anymore. Uh, and the weirdest thing is, is they're inventing, like, multi-syllable words to try to sign, sound scientific. Now, for what for words you should use instead of homosexual and lesbian, um, and I'm just like I kind of thought homosexual was kind of straightforward. I mean, granted, it can be shortened to homo, which can be disparaging, but nobody really uses that much anymore, unless you're joking around with a friend because it just it, it it's kind of blasé now. Um, I just I don't understand one why we keep having to redefine words and two why we keep trying to change the English language and not for the better I just I, I don't understand any of it I wish I did I wish somebody could explain it to me but they'd have to explain it to me like I was five because I just don't get it somebody somebody at some point who tries to explain it to me is gonna have to explain it to me like I'm five because none of this makes any sense to me like none of it and Nothing makes any sense to me anymore. So much fun, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dang, apparently. Really, Mike? You're not cheap? He's easy. He's not cheap. There's a difference. I just mentioned pineapple on pizza, and they both go berserk. <laughs> Oh. oh dear! I mean, he's easy. He's not cheap. He even says so. What? Oh man! Oh dear God! Cat turd is trending because his dog died. Oh man! I wondered about that. I'm sorry his dog died, but I can't stand the guy. Sorry. Eh. <laughs> oh, I guess we probably should talk about this just because he's like one of your favorite people we used to trash in the mornings. Uh, did you hear about Don Neman? Oh, yeah, with Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> Don Lemon. Thinking he gave Elon Musk a hard-hitting interview. Oh my god, the clips I've heard. I just laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh some more. Well, it wasn't even just the clips, right? I mean, the clips were bad oh enough. Oh my god. Because he's, like coming, he's coming at what would have been his, his boss sideways. And uh, as somebody who's been a boss before, don't do that. If you don't like your boss's ideas... Why, that it's, why, it, it's, why in the world... Did Laura Loomer just show up on my list of people to follow? Oh, there's no telling. Just just ignore it. Pretend it's not there. Um, <laughs> but so apparently his he had a list of demands that, that got leaked, which are even weirder. Um, because I guess Elon gave somebody one of his Cybertrucks. So Lemon said he needed one too. And then he wanted like $5 million up front. And he wanted uh, veto power over any other newsmakers that tried to come over to X, etc. I'm just like, dude, if Elon Musk would even just notice me one time, that would probably be enough. The dude was like trying to bankroll you and you fucked it up. <laughs> I mean, as somebody who works in the media now, you took a you took an opportunity that most of us would kill for and squandered it because you're too used to being part of a protected class that never really existed in the first place. 
So, yeah, good job, Don Lamont. But, yeah, so some of the clips, I mean, and, and Brad talked about this last night. If, you, if you've seen the whole thing, which I have, you can literally see from the look on Musk's face the moment Lemon is about to get fired. <laughs> because he just looks at him like, are you fucking retarded? <laughs> And then pauses for a second, and then and then is like, "Look, I am a free speech like, absolutist." You literally think you're going to sit there and outsmart the man, who, who, a man who's literally like one of the smartest dudes on the planet. <laughs> it's funny. Can ain't you it? imagine how arrogant you would have to be to be Don Lamont in those circumstances? Oh, like you were never a good interviewer to begin with, Don. Like, why did you think you could pull this off? The funny thing is, I always thought I sucked at interviews. So when I had a podcast partner back in the day, I always let him do the interviews because I always felt like he was better at it. And then after we parted ways, people started wanting to come on my shows and talk talk about their books and stuff. Um, and then everybody yeah. was like, oh, my God, that's like the coolest interview ever because it was like we were just talking across a coffee table and you didn't try to come at me or anything. And I'm like, yeah, maybe I'm better. At yeah. this than when I, I used to do author interviews, people were shocked. I actually read the book. <laughs> oh, that was fun, too. They were like, oh, my God, you actually yeah. read it? I was like, well, you sent me a copy. It would have been rude well, not to. Well, you sent me a copy. What did you think I was going to do with it? What most people do. Skim, skim, the, skim the, ja the jacket cover if it's hardcover or the summary if it's not and then try to talk about that. But yeah, I made a habit of yeah, reading no. every book that anybody ever sent me. And I mean, sometimes it was like I got the book and I was interviewing the person like two days later. <laughs> oh, those were fun. Like, Okie doke. Yeah. All nighters trying all nighters with two pots of coffee trying to read the book. I remember those. Uh, <laughs> those were fun. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. It's all just getting very strange. And like I said, I just go downstairs and I play with my plants and it makes me happy. Hey, whatever makes you happy. Well, you just got to be compressed, dude. You got to. Well, that's part of the reason why I've decided I'm taking a day off whether I want to or not. <laughs> you got to take a day off. Well, I haven't really. Well, I can't say I haven't been because I, I do still occasionally slink into depression and then it takes me two or three days sometimes to crawl back out. But I still usually manage to pull off the radio stuff even if I can't get myself to do anything else. So still for the most part, I was working seven days even if it was kind of a shorter schedule. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know. It's all craziness. And like I said, I, I had everything planned out really well and thought I was going to be okay. And now I'm starting to think I might not be, especially if Joe Biden wins again. Because everything's getting more expensive again. Uh, I've already burned through most of my food budget for the month and, that, that I budgeted for. And there's still 11 days left. I'm kind of yeah, like, because <laughs> everything's getting so expensive. And I saw I saw a reel the other day that made me want to cry. It was like, how much $50 would buy in 2000? And it's like all this stuff. Or it's just, how much $50 would buy today? And there's like six things on the table. And I'm like, I still felt this. And I'm sad. <laughs> I just... Why do we have so many people willingly embracing the ideas of communism? And how do we make it stop? That's what I want to figure out. Is it really even communism, though? It's kind of a bastardization between hyper-capitalism and weird communism, so I don't really even know what you would call it. But it's still like the weirdest thing ever. But anyway, I don't know. I just don't even know what to call it anymore. One-worldism? About all I got for it. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. It's just all very tiresome. I think it's like this weird... It's the Chinese model. It's like how they created a Potemkin market inside a communist system. Yeah, and it basically seems like what we're trying to do here. <laughs> now, not a fan. Yeah. Uh, the tea is making me feel better. Nice. That's always good. Yeah. Oh, so interesting side note. So I posted a story to my ex account, Twitter account, shitter account, whatever we're calling it these days. 
um, mm-hmm. talking about how it's now been scientifically proven that not only do plants react to direct stim- stimuli, but it's uh, even though it's through what passes for their nervous system, they can basically sort of see us and tell when we're around. Um, and there was there were scientific studies that were cited and everything else. So me just being a smart ass posted it to my ex account and said vegans hardest hit. Vegans are some rabid crazy motherfuckers because that yes, was Yes, they are. That was on my timeline for like 2 weeks before anybody really noticed it other than the people that we run with. And all of a sudden I had rabid fucking vegans coming at me about how well you eat things with faces and I'm like, dude, this 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 story just basically confirmed that no matter what we eat we heard it. That's all I'm saying. So eat whatever you want to eat, but don't yell at me because I like to eat things that eat your lunch first. <laughs> right? <laughs> they just kept coming at me. And and I, it's not that I don't like a good salad. I mean, I, I just think we're meant to eat a range of things. We are omnivores by design. We are supposed to eat a range of things. Um, we are not just supposed to eat fruits, vegetables, and nuts. That, that that that's that's not it because that that wouldn't sustain us that wouldn't su- that wouldn't support our diet we wouldn't have teeth specifically designed to be able to tear meat if we weren't supposed to be eating meat this is why we have teeth called canines that's where those that's where that came from those are specifically designed to be able to tear meat from bone just saying so scientifically speaking the same people that tell us to trust the science our, our teeth are designed to eat both plants and animals, and I do eat both. I don't eat as much of the plant stuff as my uh, middle daughter does because she was she was honestly pretty close to vegan for most of her childhood. It took everything I could to even get her to eat chicken once in a while. Now that she's gotten older, she eats a little bit more. But if I would if I if I could put salad in front of her three days a week, three times a day, seven days a week, she'd be okay. <clears throat> she 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 eats meat, but she still prefers the other stuff. But all I'm saying is, is scientifically speaking, we do not understand where animals and plants actually fit in the grand scheme of things. Because I have seen now that animals have been cohabitating with us, like cats and dogs, things that cats and dogs can now do that I never thought they would be able to do. Like a cat, I saw a video of a cat, and I don't know if they trained them to do it and then videotaped it, and if they did, cool, at least they still learned how to do it. But I saw a a video, uh, a reel on Facebook of a cat that was hungry and had its food bowl on a timer. So the cat figured out that if it managed to unplug and plug the, the plug back in, the timer reset and the food would drop. So it got videotaped of eating its food, going over, bopping the plug until the light went off, bopping it again with its paw until the light came back on, waiting for the food to drop, and then going to do it again, and did that repeatedly for like two or three times on the same reel. And I'm just like, that, that, to me, that just proves that everything is a lot more intelligent than we, than what we want to think or what we've been led to believe. So honestly, whether it's plant or animal, we got to eat something or we're going to die. And if 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 plants are smart enough to respond to stimuli and can react to pain and things like that, then I don't really understand the vegan argument. And then they're like, well, at least by me eating tofu, I'm not killing animals. So I posted an article about the 1.8 billion animals that would be killed if America tried to do an all-vegan diet. I'm like, well, that's still less animals than your side kills. I'm like, yeah, but you're still not saving the animals the way you think you are. Stop telling me what I should eat, and I won't tell you what you should eat, and leave me alone. But it goes even further than that, because now PETA says they don't want children to dissect animals in schools anymore. Never mind the fact that they're not dissecting live animals. People have lost their mind. Well, vegans are just terribly aggressive people. Well, I mean, you know, if I never got... Well, they're hangry all the time. I was going to say, if I never got to eat a steak, I'd probably be pretty fucking aggressive, too. (laughs) They're just always hungry. Like, I don't know. 
I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, for the for the rest of that exchange, you'll have to go to my timeline because some of it got <laughs> a little raunchy. But I I will say one, one of them kind of got me. Um, so you yeah. raunchy? Well, no, that was it was them, not me. I posted I posted a window liquor gif and was like, "Hey, is this you?" And then she came back with, "Yeah, that's what that that's what I do when I'm pleasing my husband." And I'm like, "Well, if you swallow, you're not vegan." <laughs> No. <laughs> I told you to go to my timeline instead, but no. Yeah. Brick. <laughs> Brick. Well, well, and then, and then it, almost, it almost made me want to follow her. But then she came back with, well, I consider it given with consent, so it's not quite the same thing. And I'm like, touche. <laughs> uh, anyway. So that's pretty much the show, folks. <laughs> dun, dun. So we are coming up on the 90-minute mark, so I think I've probably monopolized enough of your evening. Where can folks find you? Uh, They can find me on Twitter at Scott's Fire. You can't really find me on Facebook unless you're friends with one of my friends. Um, And sometimes I write for PJ Media. All right. Well, as for me, you can find me back here tomorrow doing the Thursday edition of the Rick Robinson Show, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern. You can find me doing the same thing again Friday afternoon. Um, And then tomorrow night, hopefully, there will be a Jen and Rick. We haven't been able to do that one for a while, but Bug is full swing into baseball season, so it's kind of hit and miss, no pun intended, as to when we get to do the show. Um, But, you know, whatever. Family first has always kind always of been my thing. Um, then Friday night, I'll be back hanging out with Aggie Rican doing He Said, She Said on and covering for um, Mickey Blowtorch's extended hiatus because his plate, plate's still really full. That one will be Aggie time at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Saturday, we are off this week. And then Sunday, America Off the Rails is back. Everybody else took the night off on Sunday, and then I had grandkids come over, so I decided I wasn't going to make everybody rush off so I could get a radio. Um, so that one will be back Sunday. And then Monday, well, Monday I'm off. I keep forgetting. I I, I I just told everybody Monday's off. So Tuesday, be back around doing the Rick Robinson thing again and then all the other stuff that I do. Um, when I'm not doing that, you can find me as the producer for the Office Party podcast, which usually drops on Tuesdays, or con- a contributor to Misfits Politics, the Office Party, and Twitchy.com. And you can also follow along with me on social media at RowdyRick73. And on that note, we got to go because uh, – since I scored some time off, I'm going to go see what other trouble I can get into tonight before I go to bed. Bye, everybody. Thanks for hanging out. Guess I'm going the wrong way with that, huh? <laughs> See